Hello and welcome back to Garen River vs. Pacific Drive. I am here with Belka. Uh, we are on the verge of heading out again, but thought I would see what a wood panel looks like on the yellow. It's not bad. Not sure I like it, but it's not bad. I think it's alright on the yellow. Oh, I have another message. I'm trapped out here now. I tried going backwards back the way I came, but parts of me seem stuck. Like I can't... Is that resist? I bet that's resist, because it's like RE and then sort of an S, I. Upside down. Yeah, resist. Fudder. Hmm. It's probably a remnant person. I have absolutely no energy at all. So I need to head out, but uh, I think it's the middle of the night now. Yeah, it's 11 p.m. So I'm going to wait until morning and then I guess head out here. Just go on a really long journey. Although what I need more than anything, I believe, is scrap metal. I need an extension rack uh, for this side. Then again, I can't actually get any more storage. XL, roof storage and a trunk in the trunk. Both need unstable. So what's the point of these additional side racks? Uh, batteries and stuff. Okay. Alright, well, I'll wait until um, morning, which means if it isn't on already, I'll put on faster nights and then uh, head out. This says nine hours. I don't know if that means nine hours to get there or nine hours, like, th three to there and there. So I, I don't know. I'm just going to put this in because then theoretically, if it is the full nine hours, I'll get there for 9 a.m. Oh, that's what that is. The third symbol down, um, that one there, that's whether the lights are on or not. One unknown abductors, broken bunnies, bollard can openers, an unknown lorry with a smiley face on it, and an unknown thingy. But this is perpetual stability, and I'm here for cars. Let's have a look-see. We have got um, swords in the stones, manual stabilizers. Sometimes you'll look upon a stabilizer. When you find one, you can activate it to open a gateway without needing to charge. Okay. Interesting. So they might be worth doing just for basically a free trip. Because um, I need, I think, one limb to get back. Interesting. All right. Well, there isn't much to scavenge here, but it looks like to repair things up there, I'll just uh, head down the road. Let you know if anything fun happens. Or spooky, you know. I bet you're hoping for spooky rather than fun, aren't you? Oh! Bunny, run right away. Hi. Alright, I am curious. Let's do some science with a bunny. These can be broken further. What do they produce? They produce electronics. That is worth it. A lot of radiation here, so let's make this quick. Open that. Grab that. Oh, bollards. Okay, wait for it to settle down and then head back on. Oh. Okay. Guess not. Stop that. Oh, off-white paint. You can get paint from bunnies. Bunny paint. That sounds awful. Well, that's a spooky noise coming from that direction. Ignore the can opener. That's not spooky. Ah, that's what that spooky noise is. Um, it is a storm approaching rapidly. A storm that is now on me. That is so trippy to see. <laughs> Just seeing in the sky in the early morning an electromagnetic, what looks like, I'm assuming a seismic storm. I'm not seeing the wind. Wow. Can I get a photo of that? Pretty trippy. Limb Fair 1973, coming soon to Sierra. And I've realised I was pronouncing it wrong. I was saying Serum, but it's Sierra, like Sierra. I don't know when this game is set. Like, 
What is that? Oh, it's hot dust. Um, I don't know when this game is set. I've been trying to work it out, but ooh, okay. Um, but it seems inconsistent. Like, there's a lot of references to the 60s. Sometimes they say, oh, 30 years ago when stuff happened. Sometimes they say 40 years. It's really confusing. And I'm, I'm wondering if that's deliberate. Like, if it's a case of, um, like, the time isn't the same for us as it is for, like, Francis and, um, what's his name? Tobias? I don't know. But, like, I need to... I need to sit through... Oh, I, that's, that reminds me, actually. Sorry. Hang on. Uh, good to talk about now while I'm just going about and doing stuff. I think I'll sort of talk about this and then overlay it over stuff so I may interrupt uh, briefly. There were the three messages that appeared last time I recorded during left and right sections. And I froze... I freeze-framed them and I've got the screenshots in front of me now. So what they said, the first one... And here they are on, on screen... Attention employees and residents of PN26, which is presumably uh, Peninsula, uh, like the Olympic Peninsula, Peninsula is where we are. This is broadcast 7750 from the Zone Regulatory Commission. Effective 700 hours, all pneumatic tubes within sectors 2 and 8 must be closed and sealed for a period of 24 hours. It may be expected, and then it cuts off. So that sounds just like a, a message from 30, 40 years ago, whenever this place was active. The other two are creepier, but one of them definitely has an explanation. You all enter the clearing and there's tall trees all around you, and there's something eerie coming out of them. There's some sort of creature, and it reaches out and attacks you, Je Justin. I need you to make a dexterity saving throw, roll your dice. That is clearly people playing D&D. So again, presumably that was in the zone before. The last one is the creepiest, although I have a theory. They turn their hands, their eyes, their heads towards you, but their bodies stay facing towards Anoop, and a strong wind blows, and their bodies sort of, like, dissipate on the wind. I, that sounds like another D&D &D description, because it's not... It doesn't sound like a report. It sounds like someone describing... somewhat dispassionately. So, yeah. I reckon those last two are D&D &D ones, the other one's like a service announcement, but they're all from years and years ago, maybe the spirits of these people are inhabiting the left-right, but more likely they're just like, um, li like with the time-jumping pneumatic tube stuff we've been reading about, I reckon they're just messages that got lost in time. Well, that's creepy, isn't it? Um, where's this red light coming from? According to this, there should be a source of light here. There's nothing here. That's really creepy. Also, I think this is the van. Box truck. Uh, yep, smiley face van. Private notes, Dr. Everett. It never occurred to me that this would become a logistical nightmare. By the end of the decade, operations in the zone involved over a hundred scientists, twice that in support staff and technicians, another hundred staff in engineering disciplines, and more than 2,000 military personnel. That last figure is particularly difficult to estimate. Oh, and trucks. Trucks all the time, rattling back and forth, moving gas, moving mechanical equipment, cabling, furniture. Guess we all need sofas, right? I'd have preferred a light rail network, at least a little more freight. But over these early incidents, it's like everyone is scared to get on any train within 100 miles, like they're cursed or something. So it's trucks all day and all night. You know what we brought to the zone? Traffic jams. And now... Now they're starting to move everything out again, downsizing they call it, or just outright plundering abandoned equipment. And it has uh, a crude panel, a blowtorch, nice, decal weird wagon, paint stripper, off-white paint, uh, the raspberry. I'm probably going to leave the crude panel, it doesn't serve much function. In fact, what I might do is scrap it. Oh, there's a source of red light up there as well, that's creepy. Apparently the blowtorch repairs stuff? Obviously not that. Ah, cool! So it's... It's like an upgraded version of the putty. I don't have space for this one, so I'm just using it up. Ah! 
Chice, that was right frickin' next to my ear. Oh, God. Oh, no. Oh, no. Oh, no. Oh, no. Go away. Okay, yeah. I didn't think that it might attract attention. Damn it. Oh, no. Leave me be. Leave me be. I'm going away now. Bye-bye. Blue paint as well. Gonna have to do a load of painting after this. What is that? You don't know I'm in here. Go away. Okay. You don't know I'm in here. It's highly radioactive, though. Oh damn. These noises, I know that they're they're basically benign, but they are terrifying noises. Oh, God. These trees, they are rock hard. Theories 5? I don't know if I've got that one. Apparently not. So there's those things flying around in the zone at night, and I know for a fact they're all robot owls. The thing is, like real owls, they're all mocking us. The reason they put up those big walls is because the owls use a kind of infrasound, that low-frequency stuff that you don't quite hear it, but it gets into your subconscious. They mock you, and they you feel bad about yourself, and you walk around feeling like you should have tried harder to be a baseball player, or, or that you bought the wrong shoes. So those walls block the infrasound. Thing is, it's actually really tragic because the walls absorb the bad vibes and then they feel sad themselves. Go on, ask them. Okie dokie. Ah, oh, the raspberry's an antenna. Okay. Interesting. I didn't know my car had an antenna. No! Go away! Go away. Go that way. Yeah, there's a thing there. Go chase it. Leave me be. Treasure trove here. Wow. He brought the flare back. Am I playing catch with an alien? Lab Reports 3, that's a new one as well. I'm delighted to report that the radioactive shielding has been a runaway success. We barely had trace readings inside the landing module, the command module, and the cargo module. You can now confirm uh, that we've created the most radiation-resistant material humanity has ever known. We've shipped the last of the panels and materials back to Arda Engineering for a further analysis, but I see no reason they can't be used again on the next mission. The degradation is minimal. I'm excited to show you the full analysis. Uh, do you want to meet in the cafeteria? Go away. He's carrying my flare. It's got to be a lit flare for it to actually care. Go get it. Oh, this wind. Oh, wow, it's actually blowing the uh, the alien as well. It shouldn't be blowing my car. My car should be in shelter. Oh, wow, it's aggravated the alien quite a lot. Oh, my car's blowing a bit, but it's otherwise fine. I'm just going to stay in here where it's safe. Cool. That alien is... Heaved off. He's just floating back to his haunt. No, he's floating back to his haunt. Float away. Bloody aliens. Anomaly encounters number one. So, I was in the deep zone taking notes. I screwed up a page and threw it aside. That was when it first happened. Something I couldn't see, but I swear was there. Eight. The paper I dropped. 
Later I would hear it rummaging in the dumpsters. It's like those old journals we tossed as part of the move. Those drew it out. It would eat cardboard too. I, I heard you could get it to follow you by dropping scraps as you walked. You'd never see a thing though, it was like a ghost. But you'd sure hear it. Okay. I don't know if any of these are real or things that we can actually encounter. Because, like, there's the hat man. There's, um... There's, like, the dolphins. And there's the invisible thing. And, like, they don't seem like things we're likely to actually meet, which is bloody thankful. Another dumpster pearl. I'm going to have to have to work out. I'm going to have to have to have to work out how to have to open them. I've just realised if Hatman is in this, he's just going to be on a hill freaking watching me and I'm not going to notice. And I might see it in an edit when I'm like editing and it's just like I look around and at the corner of my eye I notice that a figure just darts behind a tree. That would be freaking terrifying. Alright, that's all the looting I'm going to do. So I will... Um... I will double back, or I'll continue on to this stabilizer, and use that to open an exit. And I'm just going to head back early with all of the loot I've got. Here we are, the stabilizer. I don't know whether I need to activate all three. Hopefully I don't, but I, I, I probably do. Activate. Ooh. I love the way just stuff comes flying off it. Uh, okay. That did nothing, so I assume I do need the other two. Number two. Next storm's coming in, so I'll quickly hit the last one. Completely full. Alright. Time to exit. Oh, there it goes. And there's the beam. That is directly in the bloody storm. Okay. Here we go then. Ooh, can I go down this? I'm going to apparently. Okay. Oh. Controlled descent, Belka. Controlled descent. Nice work, Belka. Fantastic work. Okay, the red is closing in very quickly. And the music is quite scary. Hmm. I think there's massive radiation that's severely damaging all my parts. I think that's what that's telling me. Jobs are good and though. We are home free, Belka. Home free. Uh Ooh. What's that? What is that noise? No, no, that thing you saw was not big. What? Never was, never will be. What? Don't let Tobias and Francis fill your head with that nonsense. What? What thing I saw? What is that noise? Am I out of fuel? Is that what that is? That's very irritating. What thing I saw? <laughs> Don't say that to me, game. Oh, no, 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 no. Don't worry, that wasn't Bigfoot. Don't worry, that wasn't a murder outside your window. Don't say these things. Uh, Orca News Flash Olympia, 1969. Washington biologist and bear expert Paul Dean says he knows why the animals are no longer present on the Olympic Peninsula apart from the birds, though his bizarre theories and disrupted behaviour have landed him in hot water. Bursting into a legislative session in the Capitol building this morning, Dean insisted that a conversation he had with a pod of orca had revere orca 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 orcas all the way down. I have almost completely run out of storage space. Like, I have so little space left. I need to spend some of these resources. <laughs> Sadly, although I came out of that with an absolute shed ton of materials, I still am very short on energy. That's not a good combination. <laughs> uh, what can I actually make? Let's go for an expanded locker. Because locker space is something I will always need more of. Uh, let's stick that there. Let's move you aside. Ah, oh, so cool. Nice. 
Right, these dumpster pearls. Let me have a look and see if there is a thing that I can make that will open dumpster pearls. Oh wow, there is actually a torch. Now this is a proper light source. Cool. That is something I do actually want, but sadly needs unstable. Uh, no. No, there is nothing. There is nothing that, um, that seems to actually open dumpster pearls. I, I'm not supposed to put them in the scrap ram either. That doesn't feel right. I suppose I have a few of them. I can try one. Just, whoop. Okay, you're supposed to put them in the scrapper. How the hell was that supposed to be indicated? Oh, slice them open, break them apart. Doesn't say use a bloody matter dis 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 disingen dis dis thingy separating device. Bloody hell. Yeah, that's a fair bit, isn't it? What's that? Oh, plastic. Back it all up, yes. Oh, decals. <gasps> Camo decal. Camo decal. Now, what colour would a camo decal look good on? Lime green, maybe? I'll give it a go. And apply the camo. Oh! So it just completely overrides whatever colour's there. I love it. I love it completely. Camo car. Yes! Look at you, Belka. You're so stealthy. With a weird white patch on top. I guess that's the underlying colour. Let's make that underlying colour yellow, shall we? Yeah. Does it work on bumpers? It does not, but it does work on the armoured panel. Not tyres, not bumpers, not headlights. Yeah! Install the raspberry, apparently. Where does that go then? Oh! I see! How silly. I can make full insulated or lead plated, or maybe not lead plated, but I can make full insulated and given that I'm encountering a lot of electrical things and although there is a lot of hot dust, I don't see what damage these do other than, you know, damage. I think there's massive radiation that's severely damaging all my parts, but the electric feels like it does more. So I think I will go for a full insulated build. I know I've just put the bloody... I should have thought about that. I should have thought about it before I fully camoed the car, but... Yeah, I'm going to do it. And I'm thinking lead panelling. So I've got armoured panel there. I've got insulated panel there. But I've got space for a couple of lead panels and I've got material for a couple of lead panels. So I figured this way I'll get sort of all round protection. You are looking really quite wacky, Belka, aren't you? Can I see your protections? I can't, can I? Damn, I thought maybe that's what those numbers were, the, the, the red and the yellow. I thought that might be like protection, but that's not. Yeah, from what I can tell there is nowhere that says those and I still don't know what those numbers mean. And now an insulated panel there to fully kit out the car as best I can at the moment. I think. Uh, can I do any bumpers? Yes, I can do insulated bumpers. One. Oh, that looks pretty cool. Two. Less cool, but still not bad. There goes my decal. Damn, it's such a shame I wasted it. I wasted my best decal on parts that I immediately replaced, but it's just the way of the game, isn't it? Guess I'll put flames on the rest. Just to be cool, the flames you can barely bloody see because it's all covered in metal. You look pretty good, Belka. You look pretty ramshackle, but in a good way, in a, in a sort of, yeah, I'm trying to survive in this post-apocalyptic environment kind of way. I'm sorry, I need 200 swamp coral. Yeah, that doesn't feel deliberately padded at all. Why would it? I've just had a look through all of the uh, things I don't have, and 
based on what I can see, I need 11.4 total more stable energy to unlock everything that I currently can. And basically the only material I'm lacking at all is plasma. Maybe copper wire, I don't know how much of that I'm going to need, but definitely, um, definitely plasma. So I am going to need to go looking for spark towers, they're the best sort of source of plasma. And uh, I'm going to have to do another run to find uh, lots of... Oh, okay, that's gone irradiated. Um, to find the find a load of uh, of uh, oranges. Ah, that's what this is in the top right. It shows the uh, the number of them. So like that's low, but that's more while still being low. So I need somewhere with as much of this as possible. Ah, and it shows the time as well. So presumably that's like the time before instability kicks off. But anyway, I will continue with that next time. Thank you very much for watching. I'll be back with the Belka soon. Thank you very much. Subscribe for more Pacific Drive and I will catch you later.